Sure. Dana Post Adler? Here. John Brewer? Here. Stephen Cohen? Here. Matt Gray? Here. Todd LaRue? Here. Bryce Patton? Here. Carol Perez? Here. Great, thank you, Rochelle. So the next um, item of business is the election of officers. And we'll start with the chairperson. Do I have any uh, nominations for the chair? Nominate Todd LaRue. Second. Hey, do I have any other nominations? I'm not gonna run this time. <laughs> <laughs> Rochelle, could you please call the roll? Dana Post Adler? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Price Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Congratulations, Chair. Um, it's up to you at this point. I'm happy to continue with the vice and second. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll open up nominations for the position of vice chair. Do I have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Dana Post Adler for vice chair and Price Patton for second vice chair. Okay, so we'll we'll go ahead and split those up, but we'll um, so that we have the appropriate seconds and so forth. So we have uh, Dana Post Adler as a nomination. Is there a second? I'll second. Great. Any other nominations? Rochelle, you please call the roll. Dana Post Adler. Yes. John Brewer. Yes. Stephen Cohen. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. Craig Patton. Yes. Carl Perez. Yes. Todd Yes. Okay, and now for the second vice chair, do we have uh, any nominations? Bryce Patton. Second. Any further nominations? Um, Shell, will you please call the roll? Yes, excuse me, was that Dana that seconded? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dana Post Adler? Yes. Tom Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Great. Congratulations um, on your appointments, officers. And Chairperson, I now pass the gavel to you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. I appreciate it. Uh, next item on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Uh, is there any changes, Mr. Poppy? No changes. Thank you, sir. Uh, from the board members, anything else? All right, seeing none, can I get a uh, motion to approve the agenda? Motion. I'm sorry, who is that? That motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Annette. And a second. I'll second, Carol. Thank you, Carol. And Chair, on these, in the past, we've done uh, all in favor, but we're uh, converting that over to normal roll call. So, uh, Rochelle, if you would, please. Dana Post Adler? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Okay. Uh, agenda's approved. The next item on the agenda is the uh, meeting minutes from July 14th, 2021. I hope you have all had a chance to take a look at these. Uh, I skimmed them myself, but um, I'm hoping that somebody else uh, also has seen I will them. move to approve the uh, minutes from 7-14-2021. Thank you. That was Carol, and a second? Second. And Dana, thank you, please. Dana Post Adler? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Ewan Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Ice Patton? Yes. Carl Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. All right, the next item on the agenda is comments from the public for items that are not on tonight's agenda. So if you have any comments about items that might um, be relevant to this board, but that are not on tonight's agenda, now would be the time to come forward and address the board. All right, uh, seeing and hearing none, I will close that portion of the comments. And Rochelle, if you can swear in those who are going to speak tonight. If you are going to speak tonight, please uh, stand and raise your right hand if you think you may comment on any item on the agenda tonight, uh, or if you're speaking as a presenter or an applicant. 
the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. All right. And I am going to read the quasi-judicial quasi rules. This meeting is conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach's quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city will be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The board members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made on personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. All right, and our first quasi-judicial quasi item is uh, seven a, uh, a, sorry, 8A, Atlantic Crossing Master Sign Program. Excuse? Hi, good evening. Welcome, new members. Um, I am Jennifer Buse. I'm a planner for the city of Delray. We have a new gadget tonight. I gotta remember how to use it. Wrong way. I'll go back to this. Okay, so this is item agenda item 8A. It's 615 East Atlantic Avenue. It's Atlantic Crossing Master Sign Program. This is phase one, and it is um, 2021 to 30, and the applicant is here. Thank you, Ms. Buse. And um, Mr. Gregory, if you could come around to the podium over here where it says applicant, and for all applicants or speakers on any item, this will be the podium that's used uh, for, for speaking. This podium over here will be used for staff. And Mr. Gregory, if you could just state your name and address for the record. Mark Gregory, 18 Selena Avenue, number 21. 29, excuse me. Delray Beach, Florida. I'm gonna do the ex parte. I'm sorry, and uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. Uh, Todd, I'll be stepping down on this item. Okay. I was a consultant on the project. All right, and then we will wait just a minute while you go to the little room, timeout room. <coughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gregory. That's all right. All right, I'd like to proceed, if it's all right. Um, I do not have a video presentation, so I'm going to ask the board to bear with me. Uh, you have the, the program in your packages, and we'll just go by page. Okay. All right, this is Atlantic Crossing Master Sign Program. This project meets the size and scope characteristics for a master sign program. Great care and time was taken with the various tenants to, co to construct this program. Um, the program is broken into phases. The, this is the first phase that's going to be presented tonight. Um, it's building one, building three, and building six. Building six being the parking garage. Uh, we have three hallmark tenants. Bank Atlantic, I mean um, Bank America, Hampton Social, and La Col Colonial. Um, the general tenants will be allowed to sign at each of their entrances, meaning that the tenant that faces the street and has a walkthrough on the wall will have a sign at each of their entrances if they pass through, with the exception of Chico's. They would have two signs. That was their request. Um, going to the page, if we go to page one, it shows a nice picture of the front of the Atlantic Avenue Federal Highway presentation. It explains the various phases and what we're attempting to do. Phase three, it breaks down into an analysis of the unique restaurants, Bank of America, um, it, and that we're gonna allow various tenants, logos and colors. And all signs will require landlord's written approval. Now, if we go to page four, it shows the, the layout of the project, Veterans Square, Atlantic, 
Federal Highway northbound. If we flip to the next page five, the black outline area is phase one. Page six, we're gonna see the layout of where the various um, tenants that are currently placed are. Page seven, we have um, various pictures of illustrations of the, the mall, the front frontages on the highways, and uh, there's very a aspects drawn out in a nice illustration. Page eight, it shows the corner on a Atlantic and North Federal Highway, and it shows the two Bank of America signs, South Elevation and West Elevation. We get into a little bit of detail, um, elevation showing the placement of the signs. The next page, 10, it shows the height of the letters, basically 12 inches tall, the logo being a little less than two feet. Page 11, it goes with the uh, La Colonial, where they're gonna be asking for two corner signs. They're gonna be asking for some monogramming on a few of their awnings. And they have a little bar sign over on the uh, west elevation, the left side. Um, 13, it shows a placement of a floor plan where the signs are going. Um, 14 shows an awning with the monogram and the outline on it. Um, page 15, I'll stop here for a second. It has a very um, neat, ornate, um, wrought iron type entranceway feature with a sign that floats on top of it. These are floating letters. Uh, the next one on 16 is Chico's. It shows their basically flat wall sign with 18 inches tall. Page 17 shows a small projecting sign. These are pre perpendicular to the roadway. Then we go to the Hampton Social. Nice illustrations. We have a uh, page 19, we show a little bit more detail on it, sizing, placement, monogram logos on the awnings as well. As well. Page 20, a little bit more of a detail, a close up of the type of sign that they're looking for. 21, um, explanation of the lettering that was requested on the awnings. Um, again, a floor plan showing a layout of where the signs are going. And it also introduces um, Bar Dorado, which is uh, centered in the mall area. Page 23, you're going to be looking at two signs on Bar Dorado. And again, this is inside the mall. Um, page 24, we're looking at the parking garage sign. We're just going to have a P with an arrow over the entrance of the parking garage, and it shows its placement in yellow on the lower right-hand side. Um, the general tenants, there'll be a lot of flat, a flat wall sign or projecting sign. They're looking for unique shapes and sizes throughout the project. This is the last page 25. And uh, that concludes that part of the presentation. But I wanted to note that we have questions raised about sizing, a number of some signs, and we were open to discussion with the board to talk about all of this. Um, we look forward to answering any questions you have and uh, look forward to your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Abuse. And before you start, Rochelle, do we have IT support available? Uh, you just step down. Okay, because I can't open any files. Uh, it's like... Is everybody else having that same problem? No, because I can see Price that's, that's, next that's to me and he's... And this is, um, It's literally taking forever to download individual files. Probably not on a wireless network or something. It's connected, but it's like slow connection or something like that. So it's you can see it's only uh, it's been sitting here for a number of minutes and it's only connect downloaded a tiny bit and. You need, I have I have a paper agenda, but I don't have you know anything. Else. Do you want a paper agenda? In the no, uh, the agenda is fine. I've got that open, the, um, but uh, I just can't look at any of the rest of the files. Which okay. <clears throat> what 
what's your Wi-Fi now? Um, Delray Private. I think that's the right word. That's probably why. It's, it's Delray Public, I thought. It's uh, when I'm on. It's, uh... could, you, could you use um, Delray Public? Well, I'm going to need it for the whole thing. You're on Delray Public Wi-Fi? Yeah. This one? Delray, this one. Uh, I'll try it out. Chambers. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Steve. Was it okay to go ahead? Yep. Okay. Um, as stated before, this is um, Atlantic Crossing. I think everybody's very familiar with this project. And this is for buildings one, three, and six. It is going to be done in um, four phases. Um, I kind of wanted to go in a little bit for um, the new people what a master sign program is and um, try to explain it a little bit. So when a project and, or a development is of large scale, um, we use a master sign program. You'll see a lot of master sign programs um, in your uh, shopping plazas. Uh, but when something is of such large scale, sometimes you'll see them on hotels as well for this helps with subsection D and E, which were just regular signage would not be effective on the buildings. And this also allows for automatic granting of waivers so they don't have to go through city commission. And subsection D are the aesthetic qualifications. And this includes some visual harmony. Um, and that is where it relates to the architecture or buildings or adjacent surroundings and also garishness of the overall effect, and also scale, design, and location. They should be appropriate um, on as far as scale, size, and design for the neighborhood or streetscape. And also, um, signs should be proportionate in size and scale and, po and position harmonious, harm harmoniously as well. Subsection D or E is uh, your so, the placement of signs and the type of signs you can have. Wall signs, uh, you can have one per business pace, facing us uh, a street frontage. You can have one per building on the rear for nine square feet. Uh, you can have one facing the, uh, the uh, railroad tracks or I-95, I'm sorry. The direct you sign is one per building. A projecting sign is one per business. It gives you the limitation of size on that, et cetera. So here we are with um, Atlanta Crossing, and it is a very large project, as you've heard. It goes into four phases. So for that reason, a master sign program uh, is required for this. Although a master sign program does allow for the additional signage, there are limitations on the signage, the size, and the location. It should be <coughs> taken into consideration so it's, it's not to give a negative impact to the adjacent surroundings. And, and to still have the visual harmony um, surrounded um, with residentially zoned areas. Here you do have, I believe it's Northeast First Street is a residential street and right across on Federal Highway is, a, um, is the Colony Hotel. Um, so that, that should be taken into consideration. Additional signages also, be, also should be taken into consideration the sizes of the signs and the locations of the signs um, should also be taken into consideration. So this is the area of where, except for building six, which is the um, parking garage sign. These are the areas that they're looking at. Um, Mr. Gregory talked about Lake Colonial, Chico's, and Hampton Social. Also included in the sign package was Bounce and Aura, and I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a minute. Here's the Bank of America signs. This is on Building 1 on the corner of East Atlantic Avenue and Federal Highway. 
and they are proposing naming rights to the building and so this will be up on the upper floor on the tenant spaces and these signs are 40, 40 square feet a piece. These would be allowed um, under straight code and sign permitting. Uh, normally you don't see signage above the first floor but when it comes to naming rights we have seen signage and allowed signage above the first floor. This is building one and again this is Atlantic Avenue and South Federal Highway and this is Lay Colonial. So they're, they're proposing two flat wall signs, one on the west elevation and one on the flat, um, one flat wall sign on the south elevation. And these are the two signs. This is the bar sign that they're looking at and the um, floating letters as Mr. Gregory had stated. And again, this is um, the one flat wall sign facing Atlantic Avenue. But what they are also asking for, in addition to, is, um, do I have it on this slide? No, is the awning signs. And in our code, awning signs are also considered wall signs. So that, that also needs to be taken into consideration. So it's not only two flat wall signs um, and one wall sign on the south elevation, it's all of the awning signs as well that they're asking for, which is wall signs. This is Chico's. Um, this is facing Atlantic Avenue, and one is a flat wall sign, and this is a small little projecting sign. So Hampton Social is on the um, building three, and it is facing Federal Highway and interior to building six. So the proposed signage for this um, uh, restaurant, I believe it is, there is a proposed 146 square projecting sign that is um, on the second and it looks like it's going a little bit up onto the third floor. And um, this sign is almost five times as big as what is allowed by code. And then they are also looking at a projecting sign um, internal facing, which is 37 square feet an awning sign, and then each awning to have the insignias on, on their awnings. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like this bar Dorado is part of the Hampton Social. It is interior, and they are proposing two wall signs, one on the south and west elevation. They are small. Um, they're only about 11 square feet. These are the typical tenant signs. This went, this, we went over this. Um, they are asking for, uh, I believe it's flat wall sign or a projecting sign with window lettering. And this below here is just the different shapes they're looking at for the projecting signs. And this is the proposed parking um, sign for building six. It's, it's 11 square feet. So as we went through this, some of the analysis for this program is, for the phase one, is we have Hampton Social proposing two projecting signs, one facing Federal Highway across the street from the Col Colony Hotel, which is proposed on the second and third floor um, where there is residential living, and as stated before, is almost five times the allowed size under the, um, not the sign program, but the regular straight sign code. Um, awning signs are considered flat wall signs and both the Hampton Social and Lay Colonial are proposing several awning signs um, as well as wall signs. Additional wayfinding signs on site along East Atlantic Avenue, Northeast 6th and Northeast 1st Street could be advantageous to direct traffic to the parking garage and shops. Um, this is consistent with the Gibbs shoppability analysis as Gibbs was looking for unique signs for each tenant, which you can tell that these are all kind of very unique. They're not, um, when you walk into a shopping plaza, they all look the same. So this is, this is what he was looking for. Um, under the straight code with no master sign program, one wall sign per street fronted is allowed and one projecting sign is allowed. 
With this, you have several signs for the larger tenants um, proposed, and this should be taken in consideration, um, as I stated at the very beginning. There, are no, there is no information for the additional signs for bounce and aura. Um, what was stated in there is that they should be considered for three frontages in phase one. There is not enough information to include um, bounce and aura, which are suites 115 and 211, into this sign program um, to give the staff capability to approve them uh, administratively under phase one. This did go um, through DDA. Um, they were not in support of this uh, master sign program. They had um, concerns with the lack of wayfinding and parking signage to the garage, the amount of signage, uh, signage for each tenant that was being proposed, the size of the signage, and there was concern that the master sign program is not within character of the downtown vision and, ma and maintains the and wants to maintain the character of the downtown. I believe I added the letter for DDA that went into more detail. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Buse. If anyone from the public wishes to speak on this item, uh, now would be the time. Uh, you can step up and you have up to three minutes to speak on the item. And seeing no one, um, We'll close public comments and Mr. Gregory, do you have a rebuttal or additional testimony? Yes. Um, as I stated earlier that if we have, you know, there was questions about the number of signs, the size of signs and placement of signs, and we're open for discussion over that with the board. Um, in regards to the wayfinding system, there is, a, there is a wayfinding system in place, but it's more of an institutional you know, tree, street signs and like that, and we did not include it in this program. Um, we, since this is coming in phases, it's kind of be kind of like a need. If it becomes apparent that we need to have additional wayfinding, we would come back in in one of the other phases and add that. Um, and uh, we just didn't think it was appropriate at this time until the site started to evolve because there's a lot going on. There's four, three other phases going to be residential office and uh, we just want to see how that evolved and we plan we're probably going to be coming back relatively soon in regards to the um, aura and the bounce um, this was just a we weren't trying to put this in the package we just wanted to explain that they are going to go there but they would still be restricted to one or two signs not three one on each corner and, and that was going to be kind of self-regulated by the landlord. But with that being said, you know, we would like to talk to you about the size of some of the signs, the numeric quantity, but we would like to get the board's opinion first. Thank you. All right, thank you. And Jennifer, any additional comments after that? I do not. All right. So, Mr. Gregory, what would not be permitted under this? I mean, it seems like there is a wide range of sizes, styles, lighting, um, all kinds of things. So what, what wouldn't be permitted under this? It's, well, once what's the consistency that, that makes this uh, package instead of a... Uh, well, you're gonna, with the primary tenants, Bank of America, you know, La Colinelle, and the, uh, the Hampton Social, I mean, those are the really unique ones. The general tenants are gonna be, they're going to have either a flat wall sign or they're gonna have a projecting sign. And we're going to have various shapes and sizes, not, not limited to just this, maybe something, an oval or something a little bit more decorative, a diamond shape. Um, but it, we wanted to show you that there's going to be a variety and they're going to pretty much fit into the normal rules that we have in the community. The, the difference is the fact that there's a mall feature and to have a sign on, if you have a pass through, you'll have a sign in the mall and you'll have a sign on the street. You could have a projecting sign or a flat wall sign. Not both that the code allows on one frontage. But it's, uh, we're throwing it up. We're looking for discussion. We're looking for input. You know, the size of some of the other signs, again, up for discussion. Let's talk about it. I have, we have to go back and talk to all the clients uh, at the other end, the tenants that are potentially moving in, and get their input. So um, we could move forward with directions, I guess, what we're looking for more than anything else. Okay, thank you. So, um, 
We'll put it to the board and Price. I know you've got a number of comments, so if you'd like to start. John? Um, yeah, sure, I'll go first. Uh, I think I have some concerns basically about Hampton Social. It just seems like the signage there, especially the banners, a um, little excessive, every banner getting, getting a logo. Um, that one sign, I have real concerns about the residents, if that's going to be a glaring light. I mean, once that building goes up, that whole area is going to be a corridor now with the col Colonial across the street. And I, I like the idea of a sign like that. I mean, it's, what it looks like this is turning into is a city block, kind of, with all the different signage and all the different fonts. Um, so I have some real concerns about the scale of the sign, especially for the residents. If I'm staying there on the second floor, those lights, how are they going to affect um, my nighttime? Um, you know, I, and I'm all for businesses doing their own original thing, but, um, you know, my rights end where your rights begin. So it's kind of one of those things of, of what's fair for the residents, what's fair for the other tenants. Um, but as it stands right now, I think my main misgivings are with uh, the Hampton Social. The other signs seem to be okay, but it um, just seems a bit excessive. Ms. Gray, you have thoughts, comments, questions? I think I echo some of the concerns in the DDA letter and um, that John just shared. Um, the Hampton Social sign, uh, I think, you know, we have a business like the Colony that's been here for quite some time and that seems to outshadow and is not um, in the same vein and is not consistent with that particular block or corridor. I, I know it's difficult because you're looking for specific direction. <laughs> You'd like to walk away with, you know, scale it back by this many feet and maybe this many signs. I'm not sure if we as a group can be that specific to help you. Maybe Anna? you can. It's my first day. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Anna? Yeah, so um, first of all, thank you for, for coming to us and um, engaging in a, in a conversation because and a dialogue because I think that's really important. And I think in the year that I've been on this board, we've been um, very amenable to um, and thankful, uh, frankly, for businesses coming in and doing business here in Delray, which we all love. Um, so having said that, I... Um, I concur with my two colleagues on the board here about Hampton Social for me is the most glaring. Um, I think the sign is way too large and the awnings um, should be somewhat consistent. And um, the wayfinding, again, I'm not sure how that fits in with the package you mentioned, it will come next. Um, and then also the Bank of America sign is that going to be illuminated? Because I think we'll have a, a similar issue with the residents on the second floor there, right? Um, so, um, and, and really it's, it's sort of, it's not really up to us as a board to tell you how to, you know, what will kind of um, be approved. But um, those are generally my concerns. Again, the colony I think is fine uh, from my point of view. Um, but, and, and Chico's, whatever you showed us, it should be fine. Those are my comments. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, I would agree with most of the comments so far. I, I think that Hampton's sign on the side is a bit, a bit large, especially if you look at the other buildings on the street. Um, I just real quick kind of look down the, the street at some of the other facades, and none of them, I don't think any of them have signs of that scale. Um, I also think that the Hampton Social, I mean, the signage itself, I think, over announces itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and, you know, in, in the, the, the lit up sign, is, is that a, like a neon sign kind of? Is that the technology? That, um, um, that, that, that sign is not a neon no, sign. No, but the, uh, the one that's lit up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that seems fine as, as long as it's not too bright and garish. I, I don't know how to, what kind of um, lighting parameters that calls for. But, yeah. I, I have to say I'm kind of reminded of the, uh, you know, you see the film noir and you got the upstairs room and it's being lit by this glowing light from the hotel 
uh, sign outside or whatever. And I think that's kind of the effect that we're, we're picturing here. Um, I feel like the, this Hampton social sign in particular is out of scale of um, Delray Beach. Um, but I, I have broader concerns about the fact that the, this sign and the Bank of America signs are really not in character with the rest of the signs of the, um, the tenants. And to tie them into a master building program or master sign program seems to maybe not be a, a fit. Maybe it would be more appropriate to have a more distinct master sign program that's designed to address general signage and then bring these each separately as something different. Um, and, I, and I still have the concerns that it, see, it still seems to me that there's very little that would not be able to be applicable under this master sign program, which is not really the point of a master sign program is to say, hey, you can go and do whatever you want, um, maybe with some minor size constraints or something. Um, it's to say, hey, we want to have something that's consistent for our city and for our, you know, our plaza here that's, that says, hey, you're at this location. And, and right now what you get, I think John hit it on the head, is you get, hey, you're in a city block. And there's lots of signs because there's a lot going on here, which is nice and not a totally inappropriate, but not the point of a master sign program. Um, I think I also have some concerns about too much size and scale of, of all the signs across the board. So I think to approve a master sign program that allows so many signs um, and so many signs of various scales is going to be difficult for us. So what I think we'd want to see if you came back would maybe to separate out the two major signs that you've brought forward, um, particularly with um, some thoughts to the Hampton social scale. Uh, I think the Bank of America is fine. We'd probably want to see something about how it's shielded from the residents that are on the opposite, the backside of it or whatever. Um, and then a master sign program for the rest of the tenant signs, which would include things like what you're choosing to do with the awnings, what you're choosing to do with uh, the, the um, standout signs along the walls, et cetera. The, the owner's representative is here and we would like to, he would like to Expand. Absolutely. This is a dialogue, and I appreciate that you're that you want to engage in a dialogue rather than, you know, sure. rubber stamp or no. So, uh, my name is Don Devere, 1659 Ridgeway Place in Columbus. I'm with the Edwards Companies. Um, I just want to make a clar clarification about the Bank of America sign. First of all, we were advised that we have to have a master sign program in place before Bank of America or any tenant can get their signage package approved. That's what actually brought about having to put together a master sign program because both Chico's and Bank of America submitted applications for their signage. Okay. So having said that, we were then advised to include those specific proposals in the master sign program so that we could facilitate those two tenants. Um, that's our most pressing need. Both of those tenants, Chico's and Bank of America, are under construction right now. They're, they're in, involved with their tenant improvements, so they're pressed. The other, the other ones, we've got some time to work with, um, but, um, but both those tenants are, are under the gun. Um, just another clarification of the bank, about Bank of America. There is no, th that building is all commercial. There is no residential uh, near that building, any illumination projecting from that sign, which is pretty small, I think it's only 12 inches high, would not um, interfere with any adjacent residential. Um, just so, so we're clear on that. Um, uh, and just one other point of clarification um, about the awning signs. Uh, am I correct that a logo constitutes a sign? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. And I'm available for other questions and comments as well as we go on. Uh, Todd, if I may, too. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you, did you have another point? Yes, one other question. Something I, I would ask that we consider tonight is, um, again, uh, to, to allow for Chico's and Bank of America to proceed if we find them appropriate, is to remove the Hampton Social uh, sign package from the submission tonight and move forward with what components of the program are acceptable to the board. 
Uh, Miss Peace? Yes. I was just trying to understand where you were going with um, the Hampton social sign and Bank of America being different or being a separate sign program from what they submitted. Mm -hmm. I, I, I quite wasn't understanding that. Well, I guess they're, they're not, um, you know, most of the signs are for the individual tenants that are at the scale and at the height of people along the streetscape or whatever. These are signs that are designed to highlight the entire building. Um, if they're included, does that mean that uh, other places within the building are also allowed to do similar kinds of size and scale under the master sign pl program? No. Um, and he is correct. Bank of America and Chico's is in right now for signage. So what the master sign program does do, again, it, it, when it's written, it limits the amount of signage that, that a storefront can have. Um, that, that is up to the board to decide, um, and the size, um, that is up for the, to the board to decide. Um, I, ju I just want to point out, um, when you asked Mr. Gregory what would be allowed under code, so... I wasn't asking what would be allowed under code, I was uh, asking about what would be allowed under this sign program. So usually sign programs, the master sign programs, provide some trade-offs for right. the, the master sign program, but they also include, impose some limitations to keep some consistency, and I don't see any of that, so. Right, because all this inner, inner inside here, any sign besides a projecting sign or a very small canopy sign, all of that flat wall signage would have to go straight to city commission for a waiver. Mm -hmm. And so, again, when I was trying to explain with the master sign program earlier, that, that helps them, um, but with that being said, it doesn't give them carte blanche to have five signs on one building or uh, large signs that are not consistent with, with the downtown area, et cetera. But I also don't feel like Bank of America and Chico's is a sign program. Right. Um, so, what Mr. Gregory was saying is that they were advised that they needed the master sign program Correct. in order to complete those. Correct. But they don't necessarily have to be included in the master sign program to be completed. They need to complete the master sign program. It has to allow for that, and then they need to... And then the signs can be approved administratively. Right. My real concern is just that, you know, it's such an important corner federal highway and atlantic avenue uh no offense i mean it's almost like a baseball stadium you know with the logoing and the the, the owning rights and you know we've always kind of understated in, in atlantic avenue and, and, and delray beach um and and have such a vital and such a trafficked corner it, it almost looks like we're selling out to the highest bidder <laughs> i'm afraid to you know the perception of that for Anyone who's driving down to J&J &J or driving down to uh, Deck 84 or to, to, to Boston's, um, these great establishments, it's, you know, we don't announce ourselves. It's just, I, I, it, would, it would make me sad, I think, to see a huge Hampton sign. I love the product that they put out, but to see a huge Hampton sign and see a huge Bank of America sign, or not, not a big sign, but it's uh, a, the Bank of America sign there. and. and all the logoing that's going on, it just, um, I don't feel it's, it's consistent with the downtown area. And I think it's the definition of garish, in my opinion, sorry. Is there limitations on the number of um, naming tenants that you could have for a building or for the project as a whole? Absolutely, the Bank of America is the single uh, tenant that's permitted to have signage on the upper story of that building that was that's part of the lease that's that's in the lease so there okay, will so be no other upper a, story sign per, per building limitation that is so, yes so then um the hampton social would be a per building limitation for that one as well or no they that 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 was not um, really part of the negotiation they don't have any kind of naming rights if you will related to that building that's a residential building primarily um, this is just the proposal that they put forth. Um, that's where it came from. Uh, so, 
So, so one of the things I don't see then is, uh, is any limitations, again, in this sign program so far that says there would be a limitation on, say, one building that, that crossed um, the, the floor levels of, of the um, project uh, per building or something like that. So that, like, the, the Hampton Social sign, you know, you're going from second floor to third floor. Uh, the, the Bank of America sign is, what, at the third floor, I believe. Something that there would be a limitation then that says only one sign would be able to be like that per building, something along those lines. Again, what I'm looking for in, in, in what I'd like to see, I can't speak for the whole board, but uh, I think I've heard some of their concerns, is that something that says we're using this sign program not only to allow us to move forward, which obviously you want to do, but also to do some placemaking for what this place is. What is Atlantic Crossing and what is its identity? And I don't see anything that kind of establishes that here. Well, um, but actually that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying not to establish an identity for Atlantic Crossing. We're, we're trying to do what this gentleman spoke about, which is to make it feel more organic, a collection of independent small businesses, not a mass, not a big project, not an Atlantic crossing program. Nowhere in this entire proposal or anywhere in our development uh, is there a proposal for an Atlantic crossing sign. Um, we're, we're actually trying to do the exact opposite, which is to, um, to the extent we're able, make the project feel a little bit more organic and less institutional in that regard. Um, Right, so you get the city block feel instead of shopping mall feel. Yeah, exactly. Feel. Um, so to answer your question about limitations on uh, per story signage on other buildings, we'd certainly be open to that. But my understanding of the sign program is that this is it. Whatever is approved is it. So we wouldn't have the ability to put any additional signs on <coughs> stories of buildings because it wouldn't, have be, it wouldn't be included in the master sign program in the first place. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Poppy, do you have? Yes, Chair. Uh, Scott Poppy, Principal Planner for the City of Delray. Um, with respect to having a more consistent uh, style of signage, um, I would forewarn the board. There, there are, are a number of different architectural styles in this project. Um, mm -hmm. I would hazard, hazard to say it's probably at least four different styles. And limiting or trying to define the, the style of signage and having a more of a, a homogenous uh, sign package um, is not going to work, in my opinion, with all these different architectural styles. They, you know, we have one style that's um, Art Nouveau. If you, you try to do something with one building, that's not going to work for the other buildings. So just want to point that out. I, I understand that fully. I understand with the point of what they're trying to go for. I'm just trying to say, if we're going to approve a master sign program, I want it to be something that sets some limits on what they can do and, and why, so we don't wind up with, you know. I think tonight what you're looking at with this program is more of the size and the amount of signs for each tenant um, and the placement of the signs. That to me is, I mean, for personally for me, for Hampton Social, it would be simple. Scale that sign down that's on federal. Just scale it down and then maybe every other banner, you know, for the logo where it's just not so busy. I mean, something along those lines I think I could entertain um, for that particular uh, business. I mean, what would the rule be, though? Right. Right. You know, do we have allow three per... You know, frontage, do we allow five per frontage? Uh, I mean, they're showing, what, four there, I guess, with uh, logos and, and one other. I think it's difficult because Mr. LaRue is trying to, you know, create some sort of consistency, and yet it's, there's no real consistency because there's like a push-pull between, you know, keeping in the style of Delray Beach, keeping the style of this, these buildings and this mall. I mean, if you wanted a suggestion, I guess, for Bank of America, for me, and especially given that we know now that it's it's completely commercial, I mean, I would maybe like similar to the Ray, which just opened, maybe just bring it down so it's it's sort of on top of the wood. 
and um, maybe get rid of the colors and just have it the same color as. Um, that's their corporate logo. That's, that's corporate. yeah. That's yeah. they have the right to use the colors in their logo and. Well, that's the question. Like, do these tenants have the right to use their colors, or should we make some consistency and say, let's be more subtle? They still have their lettering, but no color. I don't know. It's just a suggestion, and we're really not supposed to do that as a board, but. Since this is more of a dialogue, I just figured I'd throw that in. Yeah, we, we can't um, limit them not to use our corporate logos. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, if, if the Chico sign is in the vein, I think the Chico sign is more in the vein of what it is our downtown represent. Mm -hmm. Is there any disagreement with that? Uh, could we use that then as a benchmark for guidance for the Hampton Social. Uh, as an individual, I am actually okay with the Bank of America sign. Uh, where it is, it, it's more of a drive. Of, oh, mm -hmm. I forgot that was there. <laughs> 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 but it, was a, it was more of a drivability, visu visible issue. And so Bank of America is fine with me. Um, I don't think it impacts so much, as he said, the residents and or the walkability of those on the street level. So if Chico's is in vain, which I think, with the consistency of what our downtown is now, instead of us trying to be rigid, uh, go back to Hampton Social and say, let's get closer to what Chico's has done. Um, with, I, I, I just pulled up the Colony Hotel, which has been here forever, and they have two banners logos on, on the front mm -hmm. of the street. So, I mean, in, in fairness, these are businesses that have been here forever and invest in our downtown, and we should be equalizing that, right? So I'm okay with going back to Hampton Social and say, saying two on the front, right? And more in the design style of the Chico's. Yes, again, uh, we'd be happy to um, withdraw the Hampton Social part of the, of the application so we can go back and go to work on it. We've got great feedback from you all on that, and that's, those are appropriate comments, and um, we, we can come back with that aspect at a later time. So this should have been a concept review. <laughs> How come we're here as a, as a uh, formal hearing? Because they do have the Bank of America and Chico signs they're trying to get approved. Okay, and then a question for Mr. Bennett. If um, it looks like if we motion to approve it, even if we uh, uh, just include verbally in the motion that uh, we're only approving Chico's and uh, Bank of America, which, by the way, I have no problem with either of those signs. Right. Um, um, but it says we're approving the master sign program. So I just want to make sure that we're not approving stuff we don't, we don't realize we're approving. So I could potentially help you with language that would say that you're approving a master sign plan that only includes the Bank of America and Chico signs as presented. And this, of course, is subject to Scott and Jen feeling comfortable as well. The applicant would need to agree to that. Um, my concern that I would tell you is that once something is approved, you are not going to have much ability to modify that. And so that could create a problem in the future. Um, it could also, if the board is looking for consistency in signs, it could potentially pigeonhole the applicant into signs that are more consistent with Chico's and Bank of America instead of these other designs they've presented. Yeah. So there's, there are concerns on both sides. I, I understand the applicant would like those signs to go up right. as quickly as right. possible, especially for their tenants. Again, if the board wants to do that, I, I will do my best to help you with language that achieves that goal, um, if Scott and Jen are okay with it. But I, I would have concerns that, that once that's approved and once that's yeah. out the door, it's going to be difficult for the board to address those potentially down the road. And then th this sign program, Jen, would apply to phase one and play phase two? Or are they two separate master sign programs? The goal was, as they come in with phase one as a master sign program, and then each phase would be an amendment to the master sign program. So they would build upon it. So, well, I, I you know, I, I 
I, that's why I asked uh, Mr. Bennett about the um, what we'd be approving tonight. I, I, I understand the, the urgency can can can. Um, uh, can I mean, it, it seems to me that the that the smart thing to do is to continue with direction. The direction being that the Chico sign and the Bank of America sign are fine, but I don't know what kind of time constraints the applicant's under. Yeah, we're talking at least a month probably before the next spread. No, it's going to be in three weeks, two weeks, like the second week of October. If we have one, then we haven't always had one. Well, first. we can bring them back for just that. Can I interject for a bit of clarification? Um, just yes, to be sir. clear, uh, I just want to make sure I understand uh, the board's thoughts on the other three components that have been presented, which are projecting garage sign, which would be part of the master sign program. I, I think that's appropriate and acceptable, but be interested to hear about that. And then really most of the signage that's part of the master sign program is in the interior courtyard which we haven't really discussed. I think it's properly scaled, um, uh, but I wanna make sure everybody understands what that is, what that consists of, and that's, the, and that's acceptable to the board. This is a representation of various sizes and sh not sizes, shapes there. Uh, Jennifer, do you remember total square footage on those? It's right here. Um, so the um, smaller tenants would be allowed a flat wall sign or a projecting sign. So the flat wall sign would go by straight code. And then the projecting sign, if they chose that, um, I'm looking at it here, and it's 39 inches wide by 36 inches tall. And these are all the interior courtyards, so the storefronts that face out into that interior pedestrian courtyard. I don't have what any, staff any issue back on, of on these. Nine square feet. There there, is a... There's no issue with this um, because, again, you're going by what the sign code allows. Um, and again, projecting signs are allowed to be 30, 30 feet, and these are very tiny compared to that. And they're asking for one or the other. Okay. And did you and Scott discuss the, the, what problems there might be if we just continued with direction rather than? Proving the master sign program with the Bank of America. We've been tossing it around. I'll let Scott answer. It, it certainly would be a lot cleaner for us if um, the entire master plan was approved at one time um, rather than approving, say, building one, which is the one up on Atlantic right. Avenue, the Bank of America, uh, versus the Hampton. If, if if you want if you want to uh, approve the master sign program for building one, and exclude uh, building three, which is the Hampton, we, that's clear enough. We, we we can deal with that. Um, so does that answer the the question? Yeah, I'm I'm just concerned about some of the uh, ramifications down the road that uh, Mr. Bennett mentioned. I don't want to approve something that might. Well, I think he was kind of um, leaving to staff on whether there, we felt we had an, enough um, or had a, a comfort level if, if you separated those out and then had, you know, they had to come back with a, a master sign plan modification to do then building three, which is the Hampton building. Is the uh, Colonial, is that in the first building or third building? That's in building one. That's in building one too, so we'd be approving that sign too. Correct. I have a question about that sign. You know, it would, now if, if you, okay, now, if you do individual buildings or individual signs on the building, then it gets... No, I don't want to do that. We're getting into I'm just, fuzzy area for us. It, it seems like we're reaching a, an area where we might be willing to approve, a, I might be willing to approve a master sign program for building one. But if we do that, the colonial is, is in there, and I have a question about it. Is right. that, um, Mark, is the... Um, the, that's a neon sign, right? The one that's on the, yes. that's one that's on. Yes, I think one is LED, the other one is neon. Is that, is that attached to the wall? It looks like it was on the. Um, the there's one attached to the wall. That's the one facing. That the, one there. The, yes. That, that one. one's floating on the top of that uh, wrought iron work. 
And that's, an, that's a covered entranceway? Yes. I like the look of it, but is that, uh, do we have freestanding neon signs elsewhere right. in the city? We allow neon signs. They don't allow them in historic districts. I know that. Well, we've got them all over the place, unfortunately. But um, do they, um, I thought they had to be on, on the wall, though. Everyone I see in, on Atlantic seems like it's on the wall. As long as it meets wind loads, the sign's fine. And you don't have any wind load concerns with, this, with that sign um, there? That, which one, this one? The, the neon, yeah. That would be up for plan review to determine when it goes through. Um, so then they'd have to prove the loads and stuff now. Correct. Yeah, it, this has to go through a structural engineer. Right. This yeah. is gonna tell us the size, thickness, the strength of the materials. So really quickly, I just, because now I have a bit of a concern because <laughs> some of those internal shops are in building three as well. Mm -hmm. So if you approve just building one, you're leaving out the internal shops for building three. And then nothing's been discussed about the parking sign on building six. So right. I just wanted to bring if that they're up. Here for, if they're here for comments, I would just think that, um, you know, per Gibbs, um, we, have a, we have a multitude of different signs indicating parking and, and where to go. I just think it should be consistent with the other parking sign. I don't, I don't mind the shape. But the the color and the uh, and the lettering and the and the and the, and the uh, I mean, you font want blue parking P should, if, if if the city uses blue parking signs with a yellow P, I think the, they should use a blue parking sign with a yellow P. I don't care about the shape. So. It was a blue background, white P, right? No. No, it's reverse white background. background blue P is the standard. So that's consistent in color with the um the, the color is but my my understanding was it was actually the, it was to be a, a blue background with the, the white p uh, yeah is, if it is, just be, is the normal just be consistent with the rest of the garage signage yeah is there only one parking sign yes because there's only one parking entrance however with the vehicle vehicle traffic um, is one parking sign sufficient if someone's driving in either direction? I have that corner in my head, right? Yeah, so it's a two-face sign uh, facing north and south. So as you turn southbound on 7th from 1st, you should be able to see the P. And likewise, northbound on, on 7th from Atlantic, you should be able to see it. And staff's okay with just the one? The detail uh, doesn't seem to be. Well, uh, I'll let... I'd like to bring Jenna, but uh, yeah, we we're, we're fine. We're fine with one, but you do remember the DDA expressed concerns. This is that one of the points that they made is the wayfinding to the garage entrance, and that's basically you, you know you see like downtown West Palm, you'll have the blue signs that says go down this street. You have parking down there, and I think that's what they're. DDA was expressing concerns with is they only have the one sign. There, there's no other signs to get you to that sign. But I think the applicant said he's willing to address that as part of a wayfinding for the entire project. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, but okay. Well, well, am I correct in that? Well, we there, there, first of all, there's an extensive wayfinding um, system in place for the parking garage. It's actually been constructed. So very thorough uh, wayfinding throughout the garage. It gets people from their car to the proper elevator, stair core, and such. Um, Externally, I think, is what we're asking. Say it again. Externally. Uh, other than the P sign, there is no other additional uh, wayfinding. Where signage. is the garage, actually? It's interior to the site, so. But where's the entrance to the garage? Seventh and Atlantic. See where the sequence one is? Uh -huh. That's right where that one is, is about where the parking garage is. So there would be no signage currently from either Atlantic or from northbound federal that would direct people that there is parking within this project. That's correct. There is none planned at this time. And I'm trying to minimize I think signage. that's part of the VA's concerns is it, it was it was on our analysis as well yeah yeah because if you're driving on Atlantic you're probably looking for parking right 
Right. So how are they going to know that the parking's on the other side of the... Like, well, said it's on Northeast 1st Street, right? The, the parking garage entrance yeah. is on 7th. 7th. Oh, okay. Well, still. I mean, so that's why we have a projecting sign. So if you look up 7th, you would see the projecting parking sign. Okay. I think we have some some definite concerns about this. We understand the need for, for you to, to be able to move ahead for your tenants, but I, I'm not sure that we're ready to approve at this point. Um, if you want me to do a motion, I would be happy to, but uh, I asked for a motion, I'd be happy to, but I think at this point we'd be more happy with asking you direction. to come back um, and we can talk with staff about a date certain so that we, we know that you'll be back at this date and we'll, we'll meet and we'll make a decision then. That's fine. We can work with that. Um, uh, can we set a date certain for this? I, I don't think it's necessary for a date certain. Yeah, Jen, are there any waivers or any additional notice requirements? No. Okay. okay. So we don't need that, but. Um, right. I, next I, I would suggest uh, most, well, pretty much everything that you guys review. Uh, there, it's not a public hearing. It's a quasi judicial. So there's no public notices right. that would warrant a date certain. Um, and I would just suggest if you're going to postpone, postpone with, with your direction. And then whenever they're able to respond, then we'll bring them back to the next available meeting. All right. So I think we've given some general direction, but I'm not sure we've been very consistent. I think one of the things that we had cons specific concerns about was the size and scale of the uh, Hampton Social sign uh, and uh, the light that that's going to shed into the, the buildings around it. Um, the other one was the total number of signs along any frontage. Um, so the total scale and total number along any given frontage. And the parking. And then, the yeah. the parking. you know, we still have concerns that there is not um, any parking indicators external to this that would, that would guide people external to the site into the site to find parking. Nothing so else? Can I make a motion? Please. Ready? I'd like to mo make a motion to continue with direction the uh, the applicant's master sign program 2021-230 for Atlantic Crossing located at 615 East Atlantic Avenue. And uh, as the, the applicant's well aware, we've, we've pr pretty much, I think you have no questions about the specificity of our concerns. So um, thank you. A second. Second. Dana. Thank you. And Michelle. Okay. Dana Post Adler. Yes. John Brewer. Yes. Stephen Cohen. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. Chris Patton. Yes. Carol Perez stepped down. Todd LaRue. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank I appreciate you. that Thank your you. willingness to engage in a dialogue. Thanks for your comments. Appreciate Thank it. you. And we will uh, get Carol back in here and then we'll be ready for our next item. <laughs> Are you stepping down temporarily? <laughs> That's my break. Yep. <laughs> Rochelle, um, Dana is off the dais temporarily. Be right back. Can I go, or do you want yes, me to please. wait for Dana? No, we, we have a forum. We okay. Um, the next item is um, 8B. It's 269 Southeast Fifth Ave. It's 2021 249, and it's consideration of a color change from a yellow office building with terracotta colored roof and green awnings to decorators white with caviar, black roof, the railings, columns, and trim in bronze and black, and the awnings in black. I'm going to pass this around as the applicant comes up. And uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if you could just state your name and address for the record, please, and then you can proceed with your presentation. Okay, good evening. My name is Oof Tukel, 932 Iris Drive in Delray Beach, 33483. Um, I'm the owner of 
uh, this building right across the street from the A-loft. Um, it's a 100-year-old building. I acquired it in November 2019. Uh, the house is currently yellow and green, and I just want to paint it white and paint the roof and the awnings. No signs, no other buildings, just the one. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And does that conclude your presentation? That's it. All right. <laughs> um, this is in CBD. And we have CBD to the north, south, east, and west. This is the colors that, um, these are the colors that are going around right now. Here is the existing, there is a little bit of orange in here that I guess maybe I'm going colorblind now with. And these are the proposed. And here is the rear of existing and the proposed. And I believe that is it. And uh, did you paint some color samples on the front of the building or something to look at? There, there are some color samples on the front of the house, on the building right now, yeah. Yeah, I thought I saw that. I, oh, you drove by and saw it? Yeah. Well, I was driving down Federal, I'm like, oh, that must be. <laughs> yeah, we do have some. We just changed the windows, and we're just trying to find the right colors so the decorator picked different versions of white. So. All right. Anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item, please step forward. And seeing none, we will close public comments for this item. Uh, do you have any rebuttal or uh, additional comments? It's just a small office space, about um, you know, 1,535 square feet. It will be um, just another professional building at some point. So. All right, and uh, Ms. Buse? No, I do not. All right, uh, Stephen, any comments? Nope. Chair, uh, real quick, just make sure that we get uh, ex parte from Ms. Adler. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Any ex parte communication? Nope. Okay, thank you. Carol? I have no comments. I think it look, the colors look good. Price? Thanks for not trying to tear it down. <laughs> no, it's great. And, and can you paint a standing seam metal roof? Or do you have to get it imprinted in the... Oh, it's a special kind of stain that they have to, to do on it. So you can do it and it's not going to chip or rust or anything? No. More than anything no. else? Good. No, there's a certain way that they do that. I thought you... I'd like that. I thought you were putting on a whole new roof. I'm for it. John? I think it's uh, elegant. I, I echo Price's statement that keeping the building there, I think it's a great building. It's very uh, it's epitome of, of old Del Rey. And uh, considering what may be going on around it and is going on around it, um, <laughs> I think it looks great. Thank you. Well, it's thank a hundred-year-old house. and. I'm very it. happy with what we did with it. So it's I looking really it. good on the inside. Hope you get a great tenant in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Matt? Best improvement. Mm -hmm. And Dana? I'm always the lone kind of person who talks about like the graying of Delray Beach. So mm -hmm. I am not in favor of black awnings. And white <laughs> and <laughs> the decorator picked it, but yeah. uh, that's. And the deep caviar, but it looks like my. Um, my fellow board members are, so it looks like you're going to pass. But thank you for not tearing the building down, and it is a lovely building. Thank you very much. It is a lovely building, and um, I think it's tasteful. It's small scale. We, we've been asking a lot of um, uh, those who've come before us to do some kind of, uh, you know, contrast in color or pop of color or whatever. But I think for the size of this building, I think this is, this is fine and, and very appropriate. So. I don't have any issues with it, and I think it's going to look very good. Uh, can I get a motion? I'll move to approve as submitted. Thank you, Carol. And a second? Second. Thank you, Annette. Second. Uh, who's the second, please? Annette. Annette, thank you. Okay. Opposed to Adler? No. John Brewer? Yes. McCullough? Yes. McRae? Yes. McPatton? Yes. Carl Perez? Yes. Bud LaRue? Yes. Congratulations. Uh, it was accepted. How's your daughter? Oh, you know my daughter, Sydney? Yeah, from soccer. Oh, Sydney's doing great. She's uh, doing fantastic, living down in Fort Lauderdale now. So thank you for asking. Let her know you said hi. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Uh, Got a busy night, uh, Miss Buse. This is 100, uh, agenda item 8C, 100 McFarland Drive, 2021, 252. This is a consideration of a color change from a pale yellow in the trim railings and shutters 
um, white to the body of the building in crushed ice, trim and snowbound, shutters and awnings in inky blue, and the railings and roof in Chelsea Gray. I also have um, color chips that can go around as the applicant is speaking. Thank you. And uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. No. Um, All right. Gentlemen, if you could just say your names and addresses for the record and proceed with your presentation. Okay. Uh, I am Bruce Tandy. I live at 100 McFarlane Drive, Delray Beach, Florida, 33483. I am the HOA president, mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking to do a building color change after uh, many years of, uh, of the yellow and white that we've had. All right. Thank you. And that concludes your presentation? That's it. Until okay. questions. All right. Ms. Buse? So this is an RM, surrounded by RM in the intercoastal. Um, these are the colored um, swatches going around. Um, oh, wow. Oh, do you want I put a really big picture on there. Um, this is, I, I put this picture on. Um, you do have the other two existing pictures in there. They were a little bit faded, so I, I snapped a picture in there. This is the pale yellow that's existing. This is another existing picture. Here's an existing and a proposed. And here's another proposed of the rear. And that concludes the presentation. All right, thank you. Anyone from the public wish to speak on this item? Uh, please come forward. And seeing and hearing none, we'll close the public uh, comment section and um, any rebuttal or additional testimony no the only you know we're looking to uh, modernize the look of the building it's uh, a pa an updated painting it is long overdue for the building and as we uh, within the last year or so we added uh, uh, additional decking um, and some new railings. So we're just looking to bring, uh, bring the whole package together with a modern look, but with a little bit, not just the, the usual, with a little bit of splash of uh, uh, a nice blue uh, shutter look. Thank you, and Ms. Buse? I do not. All right, so um, just looking at the rear view image um, in the materials we received, is there any of the blue on the uh, intercoastal side? Uh, no, there is not. Okay. All right. Um, Dana, would you like to start off? Oh, you have to have me to start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we knew you weren't going to like it. <laughs> so thank you for putting the blue shutters on. Um, that really, for me, makes it. And I understand everybody wants a cleaner look and a more modern look. And I know we've worked with HOAs before and it's not easy, so thank you so much. Um, so yeah, other than what um, Mr. Chairman just pointed out, that there's no blue on the, on the rear view, um, it's, it's fine for me. Oh, thank you. Just as a point of info, there was some discussion amongst us about doing something back there, but because of the, the architectural features, there's really not a spot that we could all agree to put something. You can see there's a white banding that looks back there, but when we actually, we did a lot of that, we did a lot of that uh, Sherwin-Williams uh, play with the program thing, and uh, it just didn't look right, so... You know, that's where we uh, wound up. We did actually present three different color combinations to the HOA. And uh, this was the one that was sort of the uh, unanimous uh, decision. Thank you for making the, uh, the uh, shutters blue. That's all. I'm very <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> Steven. Uh, yeah, I like it. I mean, I, I like the dental work on the side. Coins. 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 Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, you know, it's my, you know, everything's gray now, so gray, yeah. gray, gray. So. We call it crushed eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off-white. Like gray, like very light colors. Yeah, I like it. Carol? 
I'm good with it. Thank you. All right. I'm fine. Uh, nothing. Good. Right. No comments. All right. Motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Dana. And a second? Second. That was John. Thank you. All right. Michelle, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Dana Post Adler? Yes. Tom Brewer? Yes. Ian Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Bryce Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Congratulations. You have your uh, color scheme, and uh, I think it's going to look good. Thank you uh, very much, and thanks for all the hard work you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ms. Falcone. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Rachel Falcone, Planner, City of Delray Beach. I will be entering agenda item 8D into the record for Holy Donuts, file number 2021-227 and it's for consideration of material change from a teal awning with a white wave trim to black and white striped awnings. And the applicant is present to give their presentation. Thank you. And uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. Nope. No. All right. If you could just state your name and address for the record and then go ahead with your presentation. Hi, my name is Blanca Reyes, uh, 591 Ivernia Street in West Palm Beach, Florida, 33401. Um, so today is a pretty simple ask, I think. We, um, we're opening a mini donut shop in Delray next to Sandwiches by the Sea, so right on Atlantic. Um, the awnings were in a desperate need of change. Uh, we played around with the colors a little bit, and surprising enough, a lot of the colors that we picked were either discontinued or or out, we thought the black and white was gonna be, since it's a mini donut shop, we thought it would kind of fit the theme. Um, you know, we're obviously aiming for a lot of families, a lot of interaction with people walking on the street, especially coming in and out of the beach. So we thought this would be like a fun, fun little change um, for the little corner there. There is awnings, there's two awnings in the front. There's one on the side and one on the back as well. Uh, there's some seating back there shared with the sandwich shop. Um, going to the upstairs unit, um, so we we are wanting to change all of them to kind of unify them and and kind of make it all just a little fun and nice. Thank you, uh, Ms. Falco. Okay, so the property is located at 1214 uh, East Atlantic Avenue, just by the beach, and it is in the Central Business District. Uh, here are the existing awnings and the proposed uh, striped awnings for the front elevation. And here is the existing versus proposed in the rear, as well as the side interior. And um, the, this was seen by the DDA, and they did recommend approval. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, Bryce, any ex parte communication? No. Here? Okay. Um, so we will ask for public comments at this time, if anybody from the public wishes to step forward and... All right, seeing and hearing none, we will end the public comments for this item. And uh, do you have any rebuttal or additional testimony? No, sir. All right. I do not, thank you. The board then, and uh, Annette, would you like to start? I'm good with it. All right, John? I like, I think especially with the pink that they're doing, kind of a colors complement on the wall there. Right, that's part of it. Price? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Yeah. Secret door, <laughs> not so secret. Um, I'd, I'd prefer that the material be canvas, but um, I assume this one's much longer lasting. It is, and it's um, a lot easier to keep clean, so since there is- You can just throw some bleach on it and clean it up, as opposed to canvas, <laughs> which might which well, it's just, yeah, the, um, the company that's actually installing the awning suggested keeping the vinyl, which is, I believe was the previous material on there as well. Um, you know, it's easier to, to keep the white looking bright and not, not make it kind of go yellowish or brown. Okay, good. I'm good. Thank you. Probably helps keep the black looking black instead of gray, too, <laughs> or crushed ice or whatever right. we're calling it these days. <laughs> Girl. Yeah, I like the black and white. Um, I think it's a nice pop, and 
That's great. You're opening up a donut shop. Thank you. Is it the uh, place on the corner? It is, yes. Okay, because there's, there's another place next to it? Uh, the sandwich shop. Yeah. Right. That looks good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I really have nothing to add. I think it's delightful. I look forward to sampling the donuts. Oh, um, Dana, if you could. No, I think it's terrific, and I, I agree with John. I love it with the with the pink and white and teal um, sign or logo that you have. It's so much fun. It's yeah. very vintage and, and, and whimsical. And thank you for doing business here. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you. All right. A motion from someone. Motion to approve. That was Annette. Yep. Thank you. Second. Carol? I think Dana said. Oh, Dana. Okay, yeah, sure. thanks. The mask's on. I can't see whose lips are moving. <laughs> so, Joe, when you're ready. Okay, Dana Post Adler? Yes. Tom Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Mike Gray? Yes. Ice Patton? Yep. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Congratulations. When do you open? Uh, hopefully by the end of September. We're waiting on a few more permits to... <laughs> Excellent. Good luck. Yes. All right. Good luck. We wish you the very thank best you. of luck. And again, thank you for opening your business here in Delray Beach. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Bill, we don't need to... to when we make our motions, we don't need to include the, the file number or anything anymore? You just say motion. So, I'd, I'd like that plan. But. For, for something as simple as a color change... You don't care. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to jump in and interrupt the meeting. For something like the class ones that are coming up, yeah. we'd prefer that you read Language. the full thing because okay. it talks about Good. findings and so forth. But gotcha. All right, I've got one more color change, it looks like. Hi again, uh, Rachel Falcone, planner. So agenda item 8E into the record for Grosvenor House, uh, file number 2021-231, located at 120 North Ocean Boulevard for consideration of color change from a primary wall color of yellow to gray screen and regatta blue and extra white on the trim. And um, I believe the applicant is here to present. All right, thank and, you. Um, and I'm gonna pass around some color chips as well. Appreciate it. Uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? Nope. Right. Yes, I'm gonna step down on this one. Okay. Okay, I was a consultant for them. All right, so Carol is stepping down. Oh. So we'll wait one minute till And if you would just state your name and address for the sure. record. Sure. My name is Amanda DeWitt, and the address is 120 North Ocean here in Delray Beach. And you can go ahead with your presentation. So I'm part of the design committee who is responsible for doing a renovation currently in the interior of the Grovesner House. Along with that, we really needed to update the exterior. It's been quite some time. So we decided that we'd like to give it a cleaner look. It's been this sandy brownish peach color for many, many years. And um, we we're just hoping to make it look a little bit crisper by the beach. The idea is to keep it the same color pattern as it is now, but just to change it um, to like a silver color gray. And um, this more of a dustier blue. So the, the front of the main building would look similar to this. The center area would stay white like it currently is. Gray on either side with a blue section and then gray around the sides. I believe there's also, um, these are the wings buildings. They're on the north and the south side of the property, the front and the rear. All right, and is that uh, your presentation? Yeah. Okay. Falco? Okay. All righty, so the property is located at 120 North Ocean Boulevard, and it is in the R medium density residential zoning district. Uh, here are the current existing photos of the property with this yellow or beige color and white in the center and this is the proposed rendering um, showing the gray and blue color scheme and white trim and then the white in the center as well 
Um, here's another image, just a close up. And that concludes my presentation. All right, thank you very much. Anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll close public comments. And do you have any additional testimony or rebuttal to the city? No. All right. Falcone? No, I do not. All Thank right. you. Uh, let's see. John, would you like to start off? No, I don't have too much. Um, ocean style. It's, uh, it's clean. Thank you. Ed? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. I said earlier to another applicant, thank you for the blue, and it <laughs> looks great. <laughs> thank you. And price? No problem. I, I think it looks delightful. I think it's going to be a big improvement. Uh, I've been by there for many years, and I think this is going to be very, very nice, very modern looking improvement. So I, I think it'll really make that stand out. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you said that. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. That's all you got to say. <laughs> the color change ones. Right. Thank you, Price. Second. One. Second. Thank you, John. Okay. Anna Post Adler. Yes. Tom Brewer. Yes. Stephen Cohen. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. Price Patton. Yes. Carl Perez stepped down. Todd LaRue. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, let's get uh, Carol back in before you introduce the next item. I'll go grab her. Okay. All right, if you're ready. Yes. So uh, this is agenda item 8F uh, for Tesla file number 2021-197. It's for consideration of class one site plan modification associated with the facade and site improvements such as painting of the two structures, uh, modifications to this mansard roof, updating ADA compliance spaces, the addition of a freestanding canopy. A structure covering six parking spaces and the addition of vehicle charge charging stations for service use only the and we do have the applicant here to present and um, I will be passing around the color chips thank you and then ex parte communication on this item oh no excuse me one moment chair I no. don't believe I sworn this gentleman he might have come in after were you present when we did the swearing in at the beginning of the meeting? No, I was not. I was in, okay. stuck on the highway. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. And I'd like to swear in um, whoever else didn't get sworn in. Gentlemen in the back and Mr. Day. Anybody else? I'll do it all at one time. Please raise your right hand. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if you could just state your name and address for the record and then proceed with your presentation. My name is John Wahlberg uh, with ArcVision Architects, uh, 3514 Canyon Creek Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, St. Peter's, Missouri, technically. Um, so the, the project here, I do want to clarify one thing with the, uh, the ADA part because the, the landlord went ahead and made the upgrades to the site, ADA parking and things like that. So the it corrected those items kind of on their own, which is their responsibility in the lease. But we were originally had this in our plans to get it approved here, but it had already been done. It was really just some restriping and some concrete work. So the so Tesla moved into this facility, um, took over a uh, previously operating facility back, I believe it was about a year ago, the end of 2020. It's not going like this either. Um, they've been operating as a service repair center, just basically servicing vehicles um, because of a big backlog in the area. They wanted to get it open right away. Uh, they're now proposing some work to get the facility upgraded to their standards and to operate the way they really need to operate. Um, so that includes um, some exterior work. Uh, so we're going to modify 
both buildings. There's a larger building that's going to house the showroom and, and some other items, uh, some kind of office areas. Uh, the main building uh, will be, they're going to uh, remove the overhang. There's kind of a, I don't know if there's an existing photo in there. What's the back? Yeah. Um, they're going to remove that uh, overhang and cut that back a bit and then square it up and put a metal panel on there with some signage. Um, and then they're going to do pretty much the same thing to the other building. And then every surface around both buildings will also be painted. That pretty much covers the, the building portion of it. They're also adding um, some supercharging or some charge vehicle charging uh, items. You can see this is their what they call the supercharger. It, it has connects to four or these posts here um, that can charge your vehicles pretty quickly. And then they have some smaller chargers with lower voltage uh, for good charging, but not as quick as these can do. Um, these are all for uh, used by technicians, not for uh, public charging. That will require a service upgrade to the electric with a utility transformer coming into the site as well. And there also will be a, I think up one, up one, uh, oh, I have that. Yeah, there will be a um, canopy, freestanding canopy that's going to be used for, this smaller building is going to be used for uh, deliveries of cars. So when a car arrives on site, they call the, they let notify the buyer, they'll come pick it up, they'll have it nice and clean underneath that canopy so they can drive off with it. So that's what that is for. And I think that covers the scope of work. All right. All right, Ms. Falco. So the property is located at 3000 South Federal Highway in the Automotive Commercial Zoning District. Um, it is surrounded by planned commercial and medium density residential. This is the existing survey of the site. Uh, the modifications include this area over here, uh, the one story building here, the parking in this area and then the parking in this area as well. So this is the before and after. Uh, I guess these spaces were already improved by Tesla, um, but these were the updates on the site plan to add an additional handicap space that is ADA compliant, as well as the crosswalk. And this is the, uh, for building two, the existing spaces versus the proposed, so they are adding an additional space that is compliant with ADA. And in this area, we have the superchargers stations, and then they are removing two parking spaces. However, they do have a surplus of parking on site, so uh, they are planning on putting the supercharging um, equipment in these two spaces here to allow for the charging of vehicles for service use only and uh, these are the existing photos of the property uh, they do have a mansard style roof um, but the and then there's an awning type of structure surrounding this, the roof um, so the area of focus on these structures is really just the roof um, they are just going to create a roof line that is at one level instead of the other existing as the awnings or whatnot. And um, this is building two facing east, so they'll just bring it up uh, to make it just one level. And these are the proposed color schemes for the Tesla building. They are proposing bunny gray and trout gray. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Please step forward. And seeing and hearing none, we will uh, end public comment. Do you have any uh, rebuttal or additional testimony to make, sir? No, I do not. All right. And I do not, thank you. Um, can you go up one slide? That red awning, that's not in the color scheme that would not actually be red? No, we are not putting any red awnings in there. We do have some red, a red sign. 
right? So the Tesla words would be in red and not in gray, but that awning would be what, gray? The Tesla words are going to be uh, like this. They'll be gray like that. Okay. Actually, I think they'll be white. Um, I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what that's going to be, but um, it's, I think it shows up as white or as gray during the day, but lights up as white at night. All right. Uh, Steve, would you like to start? Uh, hmm. Well, it looks, uh, looks pretty standard. I mean, it looks okay. I don't have any questions. Dana? Yeah, it looks, looks like a car dealership, Tesla dealership. <laughs> that would not, no comment. Matt? Yeah, pretty consistent with the Tesla brand. No surprises. Ah. Oh, I don't have anything. Nice. Nothing. Carol? Are you affecting any landscape with the uh, parking lot reconfiguration or? No, the, I, I believe the landlord was able to do that with just painting, mm -hmm. not getting into any landscaping areas. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I think. Elevations look fine to me. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a little more red. I actually like the idea of having the red awning, um, yeah. you know, kind of pops out there and is consistent with the red logo version, et cetera. Um, tell Elon. What's that? Tell Elon. He'll... Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell him. Thank you. Appreciate it. Send him an email. Um, but, you know, overall, looks like a car dealership. I think that's. Sharp, modern, consistent with the brand. Uh, I think we need a little bit more of a formal motion because there is more to this than just the color change. If someone would like to read it off the screens or off of the staff report. Move approval of the request for the Class 1 2021-197 site plan and architectural elevations for Tesla located at 3000 South Federal Highway by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulation. Thank you, Dana. And a second? Second. I'm sorry, who is that? Annette. Annette. Thank you. Can you hear me? And I post Adler? Yes. Ron Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Vice Patton? Yes. Carl Perez? Yes. Bob LaRue? Yes. Congratulations, your uh, plan is approved. Thank you. All right, Ms. Falcone. Agenda item 8G, uh, 189 Northeast 2nd Avenue, file number 2021-228, for consideration of Class 1 site plan modification associated with the expansion of the existing fabric awning to provide additional coverage for outdoor seating at the new restaurant. And um, the applicant is here to give a presentation, and I will be passing around the color swatch. Thank you. And uh, board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. no. I have your piece no. as well up here. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I'm when you're ready, Mr. Thank Day. You. Let me go State your uh, name and address for the record. Uh, I'm Don from Delray Awning at 80 North Congress here in Delray Beach. And this is an existing restaurant that uh, has the awning out front. The awning is existing. We did the original. Uh, this is what it looks like now, uh, which was the Banyan restaurant previously. Before that, I think I've got a little picture on there, which when we did it originally in 02 was Cafe Better Meach. And at that time when we did it, which got approved was a stationary awning back at the building with a retractable coming out from it for some additional sun protection and that. Uh, the thing with the retractables is really they're not too suited for any rain protection, mainly just for sun. So. The new tenant here is trying to expand out uh, his coverage over the ter patio terrace to get a little more rain protection along with the sun. So 
Yeah, the stationary really is what he'd need to do, uh, need to accomplish that. Uh, he's going to do it in a light green ivy, green ivy color. And yeah, the setbacks and that where the posts and that are, and I think uh, fits the zoning criteria. All right, thank you. So the property is located at 189 Northeast 2nd Avenue, um, just in downtown in the Central Business District. And uh, this is the existing awning that you just saw. Um, and then uh, here is the survey, and I zoomed in a bit so you could see, but the proposed awning will not encroach into the public right-of-way and will remain within the property lines. Uh, it, the post is set back about 10 feet, and uh, the overhang does not exceed 5 feet. And here is the, or sorry, it is a 5-foot projection, I apologize. And um, here is the specs of the proposed awning. So this is the existing awning here and then they are proposing to add this new stationary awning and this will be the proposed look of the new awning with the new material and um, this was seen at the DDA meeting on September 13th and they recommended approval and um, Mr. Day just went to the Pineapple Grove Advisory Board meeting and um, they did approve the recommend approval for the class one. I'm sorry, and they did or didn't? They, they did okay. ap recommend approval. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. And anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Public is shrinking by the <laughs> presentation. Uh, seeing none, um, any rebuttal testimony? Additional oh, comments? That covers it pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Falcone? Nope. All right. And to the board, Carol. I like the green. Um, it's the same color as my business card, and uh, <laughs> you know, I'm in approval. Yeah. All right. Steve? Yeah, I like the green, too. Looks good. Dana? No, it looks very pretty. Yep. I'm good, thanks. Don? Nope, good. Nice. Quick technical question. Is five feet the most you can cantilever in the right of way? Um, well, they are not They are not going to be encroaching into the right of way. Um, so I... So, so the, oh, so the, the right of way is, is directly below right. the end of the... Um, Let me just pull it up. Actually, I... I thought you cantilevered it because you couldn't put a pole in the right of way. I'm just, I'm just right. curious. So the, here... Here's the property line, this darker line here. Mm -hmm. This is the post, which is set back 10 feet, and mm -hmm. the awning is cantilevering over five feet, but it's still remaining in the property line. Yeah. Um, the, whole, the whole thing, the whole thing is the inside the property line. Mm -hmm. Right. No problem. Looks nice. And uh, I don't have a problem either. You're changing the material for the uh, re existing awning? To, well, to the green as well. And who's the new restaurant? It's a new restaurant? Uh, yes, I believe it's a new restaurant, but I do not know yeah. what's coming in. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure what's it's the guys who did Avalon. <laughs> I think it's, it's the guys at Avalon? Yeah, he's oh, uh, brought a chef up from Miami. I think he wanted to do something small there. Okay. That's, That's my understanding anyway. All right. Can I get a motion? They're up on the board or? I'll move approval of the request for the class one 2021 228 site plan and architectural elevations uh, located at 189 Northeast 2nd Avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Thank you, Carol. And a second? Second. And that was Dana? Yep. Thank you. Okay, Dana Prostadler. Yes. Tom Brewer? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Matt Gray? Yes. Craig Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Day. Okay, thank you. All right. 
and last item. Okay. Agenda item 8H into the record for Delray Ridge 2020-237. Uh, it's for consideration of a tree disposition plan for compliance with the requirements of LDR section 4619, tree preservation protection enforcement and maintenance associated with the review of the Delray Ridge plat. So this item is seeking SPRAB recommendation to the Planning and Zoning Board for the Delray Ridge plat. Okay, thank and you. And the applicant is here to give a presentation. Any uh, expertation, communications on this item, board members? No. 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 All right. If you could just state your name and address for the record. Certainly. Alan Hendricks, uh, Caulfield and Wheeler, 7900 Glades Road, Boca Raton. All right, and proceed. I'm Ron Ellish. 16920 Silver Oak Circle, Delray. Thank you. <coughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank staff for, for working with us for months. Um, Delray Ridge is a proposed uh, 14 single family home development on the corner of Northwest 22nd and Swinton. There's uh, presently three homes that are uh, on the ridge there. Everybody knows this. We all drive by it a hundred times. Um, it is a, a site that has um, not been well maintained. Um, we have worked with staff over months. Uh, we have gone through the inventory of trees and palms on this site with a fine tooth comb at least twice. Uh, we have met the requirements that are the standard requirements for landscaping and a development of this type. And over and above that is the tree mitigation that we've uh, calculated and brought into the site. So it's additional material or it's, it's mitigated material. Um, we've mitigated, I would say a good 90, 98%. There was about uh, seven palm trees that we just said we're going to buy out of that, uh, which we did. So we have met all the requirements. It's going to be, I, I apologize, I brought a bunch of um, architectural, you know, what, what the, the site is going to look like. There is some landscape in this presentation as well, just to give you a sense of the green space. Um, what else can I can I tell you about this? Um, I think the, the can we can we flip through the slides? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I forgot to tell you this. Um, on the north side of the parcel, there was an opportunity, and we've already been through this process, to do a multi-use pedestrian pathway that'll connect where the schools are and the churches are, and keep the kids off of Twenty Second and uh, allow for bikes and, and strollers and pedestrians and such to transverse uh, between Seacrest and Swinton. Uh, that's up at the north end of the site. Uh, can we flip through? Uh, this is the landscape plans. We preserved four large oaks, one large uh, eucalyptus tree. I mean, it's, it's big. And relocated one large oak. Uh, the rest of the site is really, um, it's degraded. Like there's a, there's a lot of material there, but it's all, I'm just gonna stay, stick with the word degraded. Um, so we, we made an effort to preserve what should be preserved. The rest of the site will be um, for our elevations to make the, the drainage and such worth and work. Uh, there was not much else really on their saving, uh, worth saving. There's a backup on this, which is a, an arborist report with every single plant on there. Let me go to the next slide. This is uh, an image of the uh, pedestrian pathway. Uh, this is an image of the entrance facing Swinton. Um, and uh, the and the um, 22nd and Swinton, keep going. Next slide. Uh, these are uh, model homes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, front and back. Uh, transitional and contemporary. Next slide. 
Um, these, this particular site is uh, elevated. <laughs> I'm in a site plan meeting now. Uh, is elevated high enough that we can have basements in some of these, these um, wow. uh, home sites, which is, a, 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 I believe, a first for Delray. Next slide, please. Uh, transitional and modern, like okay, or contemporary. Next slide. This is a view of the streetscape with the uh, models, and I think that's about it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. As it relates to, um, I'm Ron Ellish. I'm the developer of the property. We're very excited about it because I think we're bringing something that the uh, area is looking for. I mean, to have a gated community in East Delray, something special. The homes you're seeing, we have two models, and each model will have two different elevations. Um, in all the communities we do, we do higher-end homes. We don't like anything looking like it's cookie cutter. So we're trying to present everything like it's every home will be a custom home. We're starting with two basic models. One's the Sonoma, the other's the Napa. Each will have a transitional elevation. One will have a contemporary. The, you know, the homeowners will be able to make that selection. Um, and again, you know, we're really have a great landscape plan around the property. It's going to be exciting because the grade level from Swinton up to past the gate is over seven, eight feet. So it's just going to look different from a typical Florida community. We're excited about it. I know the residents in the area are very excited about it. Um, so we uh, look for your support. Rachel's done a great job. Scott and his group's done a great job. It's been a long time coming. Um, but we've really dotted the I's and crossed the T's and did everything we needed to do. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Falco? Thank you. So the properties are located at the corner of uh, Swinton and Northeast 22nd Street. And it is comprised of three properties. So we have a small one here at the corner, a larger one in the center, this one here, and then a small portion, which will have the um, that access way that Mr. Hendricks was talking about. And the property is zoned R1 AA. So the tree disposition plan requests to remove a significant number of trees and palms from the subject site. However, the proposed landscape plans uh, mitigates for the trees and palms removed, um, and it displays calculations for trees and palms that are above 50%, between 25 and 50% condition, and below the 50% condition rating. And um, any tree that is removed, any tree or palm that's removed below a 50% condition rating is required to be replaced, but at a one-for-one -one basis and any uh, trees or palms to be removed above the 50% condition rating are required to be replaced by caliper inches, palm height, or an in lieu fee. So here's a snip of the landscape mitigation table that is found on the plans. And uh, the plans are proposing to remove 316.8 caliper inches of trees above 50% condition but they're proposing to mitigate by um, providing 326.5 caliper inches of trees on site. And uh, the palms to be removed, uh, the total clear trunk height is uh, about over 2,000 feet. Um, oh, sorry, that's, that's a little error here. Um, it is, give me one second. They're proposing to, okay, yeah. So they're proposing to remove 2,079 feet of clear trunk and the mitigation is 2,008 clear trunk. So they are asking to pay an in lieu fee for the seven palms, which totals of 71 clear trunk height. And um, they will pay a fee of over $5,300. And uh, this image here shows the relocation of the live oak um, on the site, and um, these are the proposed trees that are also being preserved on the site. We have the eucalyptus and the four live oaks. So the proposed plat does include a tract RW as a public right-of-way 
Therefore, a landscape maintenance agreement is required with the city, uh, but according to the proposed plat, the maintenance easements are reserved for the Delray Ridge Home Homeowners Association. And um, the proposed landscape and mitigation plans do show all the existing trees that are proposed to be removed due to being nuisance, nuisance species or under 50% of health, and they are being replaced on a one-for-one -one basis. And um, the trees that are being removed due to health and nuisance species do not require a deposit into the tree trust fund. Um, they are providing the wild date palms on site, um, and they are susceptible of lethal yellowing. However, that is the only palm that they're proposing that's susceptible of lethal yellow yellowing. And um, that concludes my presentation. If you have questions, let me know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Is any members of the public that wish to speak on this item? And seeing no members of the public present, we will close public. Um, and uh, any uh, rebuttal or additional testimony that you want to make, having heard the city's presentation? No, we're here for any questions you might have. All right, and? I do not, thank you. All right. Carol, uh, look on your I can start, landscape sure. architect brain. Okay, so um, we are only approving the uh, tree mitigation plan tonight. We are not approving a landscape plan tonight, right? No, you are just approving or recommending approval to the Planning and Zoning Board for the tree disposition. And will the landscape plan be coming back before us? So for the common areas, they will submit a class two site plan modification we do not know when that is coming, but uh, for the common areas, uh, for the um, Delray Ridge, you will see a landscape plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear. I didn't catch that. Just the common areas, not the not the individual private houses, right? No, the private houses will go straight to permitting. Will the will the will the individual lots be permitted separately? Each house, each residence. Yes, yes they will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I have um, seen, you know, the Arborist report and I've studied the plans. I'm also very familiar with the property as one of my good friends owned one of them um, that was bought. So I've, I, I do know what's on site. Uh, and after you know, reading the report, uh, it is clear, you know, there are several invasive species on the report. There's also uh, many of the trees were in the uh, under 50% condition, which is pretty poor, pretty poor condition. So I don't really have a problem with, uh, with the tree mitigation. I know the city has done their job. I know uh, you as professionals have done your job as well as the arborist to, to do that report. Um, at the same time, uh, the city, uh, the public is uh, very concerned about the canopy and I've read the social posts about it nonstop, but uh, these three homes that were that are on the site, this is a developed site. This is not a pristine environmental, um, you know, ecological uh, land, and, and with with native not trees on it. Yeah, it's not a preserve. Uh, many of the trees that were here were planted there, and just as they are coming out, um, you will be planting more, and hopefully the homeowners will continue to plant trees, and not just the four or five that the city will require that they plant in the beginning. Um, I, would, I would say, um, I would think you should rethink those palm trees going down the middle of your, um, your, your roadway. It would be nice to have canopy there and shade. And it also kind of reminds me more of a different community and not the city of Delray Beach. I think uh, the city of Delray is, probably has a little more informal look and uh, I would urge you to look at that again and maybe get some shade back on the site. Uh, as far as the grading goes, are you doing retaining walls like all along the streets, um, like along Swinton Avenue for the grades? Yeah, can I answer a couple questions there? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. <laughs> um, well, let me start with, let me start with a landscape plan because I don't see how you separate a mitigation plan from a landscape plan because they go together. 
um, because one relates to the other. We've, been, we've worked on this as a team. Um, so there is going to be additional plant material that is going to be on the home sites, okay? That's, that's part of our mitigation. Clear? Does that work? Besides, besides code. Besides code. Okay. Everything is above code, way above code, because we are, we agree with the, the concept of, of canopy preservation, and that's why we've met all these, you know, it, it works to our benefit because we're going to have a, a really lovely, uh, nicely landscaped development going in. You know, trees, if they were meant to be two inches, they're going to be five inches and some of that. Um, so we do, the, the, the palms on the roadway are kind of a different uh, look, but on the property line is where you have your first canopy tree. So the, there's still be canopy there, but it's going to be open up the roadway a little bit. Uh, the retaining walls, yes, there's a traditional six foot wall, if you will. Part of that's used for retainage uh, because the site does have such elevation changes. Uh, and then there's a smaller retaining wall. I think it's in front of it. So it, the back side, the, the school board side, doesn't necessarily need any retaining. It's over there on the Swinton side where it'll kind of step up terrace, if you will. But we didn't want a 10-foot wall, so it's, it's stepped, if that makes sense. Okay, okay, and then that brings me up to another question. So um, this uh, pedestrian walkway that you're creating on the north side, mm -hmm. is that, um, how is that going to connect to Swinton? Because you do have, um, whose property is that? that's between you and school it's the school district. So are they down with putting the walkway in or are you gonna put the walkway in for them? And do they have the land to do it? Are you? It's, it's all on our property. It goes from the existing Tangerine Trail. Well, it's, and then well, there's, there's, there, but there's a- Stick with me. There's a little, there's property in between, see? No, there's not. That belongs to us. Wait a minute, okay, so I, let's, let's go back to the slide. Oh, the, the next slide, maybe? I'm asking, though, what's going to happen between that red property line and, um, and Seacrest Boulevard? Are, is that going to be, I, I know you're doing a connection. No, let me answer the question. But is there going to be another connection? Rachel, you got a clicker? There. Um, <laughs> go back to my beautiful section, if you will. Uh, let, me, let me answer your question without even looking at this. Uh, there's Tangerine Trail, which is a roadway it's a roadway it services about four homes there's additional two lots that may be built there someday uh, all of the improvements are on our property to go from tangerine trail some bollards uh, a, a kind of a meandering pathway to swinton we will build sidewalks from the uh, church property where there's a sidewalk along swinton down to, down around our property, if you will. So it doesn't touch the church property. That we, we have that piece of property that sticks out up there, that's our property. Okay, so it will not be improved between your property and Seacrest, the walkway. There's a road, yes. Yeah, that's Andrew Trail, so that won't be improved, but it. You're gonna, you're, are you just improving on your, north prop, on your north side of the property line or are you gonna continue that treatment all the way to Seacrest so that the children have a nice walk all the way to school? Well, let me, let me answer the question. Uh, there is, and this is an older version, we are going to bring the asphalt up a couple more spaces and then on our property, we're going to bring the sidewalk down to where we own. Um, and then the rest of it is kind of out of our hands. Okay, so that seems like um, I, I'll let everyone else uh, give their opinions. But to me, if you're going to build a sidewalk, it should continue somewhere. Well, I, I agree with you. Yeah, okay, that's all. Where it's green and it says retention, that's our walkway. Where it ends, there are two other lots. Someone potentially could build there in the future. So that we, we are going to asphalt that and extend the road or driveway, whatever it's called, to that point. So right. they will always be walking on a hard surface. Yeah. And there's also, they, 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 they required us to put a sidewalk um, 
above our two lots and on the other side of that lot. Okay. I understand now. I'm, my, that's not my... my that thank you. That's my question. Thank you. Uh, but I'll, I'll submit this. Um, there's a asphalt driveway, and because we thought of this, you know, the safety of, of the kids, you know, if you're going to make this pedestrian friendly, you know, it can't be hostile. Um, but it's an asphalt driveway that services four houses, so there's not a lot of traffic on it. And so the you know, literally, and we, we really can't do anything with the school board's property. It's not our property. This is what the city has told us, and this is what yeah. the... Mm -hmm. All right. Carol, anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. John? No. Bryce? Yeah. Um, and I, I'm glad you guys are, are saving the, um, the five live oaks. I appreciate that. I, it just my, my gut kind of fell a little bit when I, when I was reading the mitigation report and it was removed, removed, removed over 300 times. Um, and, and, and Rachel satisfied that the, the mitigation, I mean, it seems like the numbers, the numbers are there. Um, I just think the penalties for taking out that many trees should be harsher. Um, and... Uh, because you're going from a um, kind of a, it's not a hammock or anything, but it's a, it's a, it's a native look to a very uh, manicured, manicured look. Um, and, you know, I don't read social media, so I did, but I do, I do share the concern about, if you look at the, the, the aerial of what it exists today, there's a lot of, there's a lot of canopy there. And what you're doing is you're, Take, removing three three houses and, and putting in 14, so there's obviously going to be a lot more open space. But um, I just think that uh, there should be how much in addition. In, in, this is my last question. The, in the with the in addition to the five live oaks that you trans that you're going to transplant, were there discussions about transplanting or moving any of the other 300 trees anywhere in the property? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and here's here's what we found. We found that, um, excuse me, um, because I've, I thought maybe we could relocate some more palms, right? We could recycle the palms. Uh, but the palm that is planted, uh, you know, this far away from an oak tree, I can't, re I can't yeah. disturb the oak. It won't survive. Um, a lot of the, uh, there was a lot of bamboo on this site, or there is a lot of bamboo on this site. Uh, there's some old, um, they kind of started to do like a little nursery of coconuts in the back. So we've, we've walked the sites. We've walked it multiple times. A lot of it is, when I say degraded, I mean that. I mean, there's nothing, it's just a place that hasn't really, really been maintained. The, the house on the south parcel is not necessarily anything special, nor the north. You know, the center one was kind of cool in its day, but it's the, the whole site is kind of the, the plant material. You know, there's some great mango trees there, but they're, they're not really easy to relocate and they're, they're damaged. You know, they're, they're not. So it's a lot of plant material. A lot of it is very degraded from the, you know, from a distance. It just mm -hmm. looks like, oh. And it, you know, I, I still love it, but it, uh, when you really get in and look at the plant material that's there, it's not reusable. And there's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's old and hasn't been maintained. Okay, thank you. Steve? Well, I mean, I think it has a look that a lot of people in Florida are looking for, that's for sure. Kind of like a manicured look, but the uh, the palms kind of look like soldiers, kind of like standing up. Uh, <laughs> I guess you know. So where are the live oaks? Like, where on the property are those live oaks? Uh, the live oaks are on the north parcel, mm -hmm. on the very edge where we proposed to do that uh, pedestrian pathway, a multi-use pathway. I have to keep saying that. Um, and they were they were in a place where it was not going to get disturbed 
uh, from grading to you know put in our roadways and our you know make the elevations work because we have to we have to do drainage for 14 houses mm -hmm. um, so because I, I made the argument uh, to my engineers and they said no that's you know we need to regrade this in a way to where all these houses are drained properly and whatnot there's just a lot of disturbance that mm -hmm. that comes with uh, development uh, so those were a, there was where a place where we could fairly easily, you know, not not disturb them uh, and and recycle them. There was one that was the one that we're relocating is one that was in a space where we could pick it up and move it to another space. The one that uh, the uh, the eucalyptus is in a space where we don't necessarily have to disturbed it's, it's huge it's 40 foot tall and it's a eucalyptus which is kind of cool um so those were those were the ones that were and and you know so so did that answer your question yeah. some of these are are not able to recycle right. some of them are not worthy of recycle um there's a lot of bamboo there that gives it kind of a, an indication that there's canopy but it's not really canopy and yeah I think at the end of the day, we're going to have a nicely, lushly landscaped project. Dana? Yeah, look, I am um, just looking at this, you know, for the first time. It was a little bit of a shock, quite frankly, to see, you know, the canopy and then it's rather sparse. Um, so, you know, it. We're in the parameters, and Rachel, I'm sure, has done an amazing job, and the arborist and whatnot. But I think, as a, as a general kind of concern um, for me, is that um, some of the, the legal parameters I, I don't necessarily ag agree with. Although I do agree with development, um, I, uh, I wish there were some more that we could do to um, have some more mature trees and, and plants that were part of development structure but I guess that's neither not really what we're here for it's my concern yeah. you know, one of the things I like about Delray is how diverse it is in its taste just about everything um, and there's a very young group of millennials and you know people who are moving in and moving out and some move for the old historic looks and you know others, and I like that Delray is very eclectic and very diverse looking, and I think there is a market for that, and I think it fits in. I, however, want to start a personal campaign to have mango trees be treated as oak trees. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> here, here. I just happen to love mangoes. <laughs> but, um, nice job. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I'll just add. Uh, you know. My comments, I, I agree with, with a couple of the comments about the, the rows of the palm trees. It's, it's not, I understand that that's consistent with the uh, upscale um, project that you're building in some ways. It's not very Delray, um, but that's neither here nor there for this. Um, I. Think that you've done the best that you can to keep some of the the most important trees on that site which i which we all appreciate i know i think all of us have a lot of concerns about keeping our canopy and, and preserving some of the older um and more native type of trees and and the eucalyptus which <laughs> bring bring in some koalas i guess um anything else any other board members all right. No, I agree about the trees. It's like LA, you know, as yeah. opposed to um, Delray Lakes, which I love driving through Delray Lakes because the live oaks there just provide so much shade and so much canopy in the summertime. Um, it's almost bearable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we are in California. We don't have the dry air. We, you know, we don't have that, that look. But Well, okay. Yeah, let me, because <laughs> I'm, I'm the landscape architect. 
uh, who's been doing this for a while, and here's what we find, that everybody wants canopied streets, myself included. Um, we have put oak trees between curb and sidewalk, and now you're paying me again to fix it because that's not where they belong. Mm -hmm. Where they belong, and I, and I kind of dig this. I didn't come up with it. He came up with it. And, um, having the palms to, to add some kind of interest on the street and having the canopy tree actually on the property line. So you get your, can whoop, you get your canopy, you get your tree, but it's not tearing up your pipes in your sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to think that, you know, that the, the graphics are a little misleading when they just show the, um, Always are. the streetscape with the palms, you know, because there's, there's a lot more that gets planted in and around uh, the home sites as well. You could use engineered soils, though, and then that would, that would help in the problem if oak trees got too big for the space. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we learned this from you know, years of experience. Palm Beach County now says stop putting oak trees out here because after 20 years they figured out that uh, it's destroying things. And in, and you know the engineered um, engineered soils we use that on really urban you know streetscapes because the same thing we want canopy on our streetscapes, um, but we have to deal with what that means you know for tearing up infrastructure. All right, uh, board members, can I get a motion? Do we want to send this to uh, the P and Z board for with a stamp of approval from us? We will see a site plan, not for the individual units, which will be provided separately, I presume, but um, for the overall site. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I'll recommend approval of the planning and zoning Board of Delray Ridge Major Subdivision Plot by finding that the proposed tree removal disposition and mitigation plan meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Thank you, Carol. Second. I'll second. Net. Thank you. Okay, Dana Post Adler. Yes. John Brewer. Yes. Stephen Cowan. Yes. Net Gray. Yes. Ms. Patton. No. Carol Perez? Yes. Bob LaRue? Yes. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. See you uh, sometime in the near future, future. I presume. So. All right. That concludes uh, Section 8 of our agenda. Move on to 9, reports and comments. Mr. Poppy. Uh, well, uh, a comment or a report is that the... Um, at our next meeting, I believe the city manager and the new city manager, Terrence Moore, will be in attendance. Um, so hopefully everybody can make it at our next meeting to, uh, to introduce um, and introduce him to what we do and, um, you know, build him, uh, bid him welcome. And the second thing I want to uh, welcome the new board members. I, uh, Annette, I didn't know, I realized you're one of my new board members. Uh, <laughs> is there any boards that you have not served on? Be nice, is, Scott. Is this the last one? <laughs> I, Every time I miss a board meeting, I get appointed. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so, yes, I, I'm, I'm pl pleased to uh, uh, welcome you and uh, to, to be in service uh, for you. So we, we are here for to help you along and make your decisions. Uh, I think that's it. That's all I had. I can't hear you. When is the next board meeting? <laughs> oh, I had. I think it's the thirteenth. Is it? Yeah, you originally had us kind of pencil in next Wednesday just in case. So that's definitely off. It's yeah. That's it. October. <clears throat> pardon me. October thirteenth. It's the second. October thirteenth. Okay. Uh, Wednesday. Yes. All right. And you believe we will actually have a meeting that. I, yeah, I'm sure we have. I have tentative items for the, the agenda. It's not a huge agenda okay. uh, so far, but that f can fluctuate. Right. All right. Thank you. Hey, yep. Scott, do you think going forward we'll we'll meet twice a month? I believe so. Yes. 
um, in November and December, although we had tentative meeting dates, um, I'm still revisiting those as, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, with one of the other boards. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened last year. Cause we, we do the, the entire year uh, setting up our meetings. E each board does that. And it, with um, September, I, I don't know what happened. Um, I, may, I Maybe I missed it because we, we'll, we'll offset meetings and whatnot to accommodate um, holidays um, and whatnot. So I, I'm, I think I dropped the ball um, in well, September. Some, sometimes the chambers are unavailable on the other Wednesday that we want to do it because we have special magistrate HPB. So we shop around, but <laughs> yeah. not available. Yeah. So, so yeah. Right now, it looks like I have two meetings for October scheduled, right. one for November and one for December. Is that right? Absolutely, um, two for October. Um, the second uh, Wednesday in November. Third. It's the, let me see, the, the ones that we have to revisit are Okay, so the 10th is, is the definite. Oh, 10th. I yeah, that's Wednesday. the second Wednesday, so that's the 10th. That's definite. Um, the fourth uh, Wednesday we couldn't do because that's uh, the day before Thanksgiving, so we were looking at the 17th. That might or might not happen because there's a special magistrate meeting scheduled. And then in December, <clears throat> the <clears throat> excuse me, the regular date of December 8th, which is the second Wednesday, we're scheduled, but the 22nd is Christmas week, so we were going to revisit it for the 15th. That's questionable. Okay. And it's pretty natural. Every year, in, getting into November to December, yeah. particularly December, it's, it's hard to keep on track. And last year, I mean, well, no, not last year. You know, last year with COVID, you know, we didn't have a problem because we didn't meet here. So we didn't have to reschedule really anything. True. That's true. Yeah. We're virtual. And then what, so I noticed it, so the, when you come into the building, things are changing. They, can, they keep fluctuating. So now, like they took our temperature, or masks required or suggested, or has that, what's, what's the story? Uh, the masks are required. Uh, this, this was our first meeting where they reinstated instituted the temperature check mm -hmm. yeah. um and that was because that's what's happening at city commission so whatever happens at city commission it trickles on down and all the boards follow the same protocol they're still socially distanced yeah they yeah they put, they put the rope back up and is there limits to number of people or well, just open, open chairs yeah <laughs> all right just just asking but definitely yeah. no you have to be in person from now on Yes. <clears throat> Subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Always. One eye on board comments when you get there. So, anything else, Scott? That's it. All right, board comments. And uh, I know Price has something, so if you'd like to go One ahead. Item, I just want to revisit that the, the Atlantic Crossing um, um, trellis that DOT said they couldn't put, the, couldn't put down. Right. I drove by them today. There's like there's like six palm trees that are about like this big. There are like five concrete light poles there. Have you do you have independent verification that the DOT was said they couldn't put the the, uh, the base for the trellis down a wooden base? Um, I could actually speak directly to it because I was the one that applied for the FDOT permitting uh, on the project. So um, FDOT does not allow structures in the right-of-way and that is why the trellis needed to come out because it had uh, the concrete posts going down and the concrete footings wood. going down wood. well it was wood but with the concrete footing so that made it a structure oh, um, okay. i agree with you there's these huge royal palms there and okay. uh, they're larger than the trellis to post so but, but that's not a permanent structure i'm <clears throat> gonna interject just a little bit um Atlantic Crossings is one of these projects that just seems to always be coming back. And especially since depending on what that issue is, Carol may be right. conflicted out. Um, 
if you want to ask a general question about FDOT and right of way and structures, that's fine. But let's stay away from the specifics of a trellis located at a particular intersection in the, okay. the city of Delray Beach. Okay. Or, or a post or, down is, is a structure, but a, a tree and a and a uh, because there's trees all up and down. I mean, a post that's that, the concrete footing that's the makes it the structure. Well, I, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying the. Um, yeah, well, uh, it's the, just, okay. it's well, all about the that's, rules. That's DOT, right. Okay, okay. well, I, I, I find myself got the answered question. Thank you. All right, any other board members with uh, comments? Chair, I just have uh, one thing real quick. Okay. Excuse me, Chair. Um, do want to echo Scott and welcome Mr. Cohen and Ms. Gray to the board. Um, mm -hmm. We have a really good board here, so I'm looking forward to, to adding some fresh opinions. And... Um, if you guys ever need anything, uh, city attorney's office, especially if you're worried about a potential conflict, I really like to have that discussion before <laughs> we're in the room. So um, we're always available. Feel free to reach out to our office anytime. Um, one reminder, if you still need to provide your certificate of completion for the ethics training, city clerk's office needs that by October 1st. So either provide a copy to Rochelle or make sure it gets to the clerk's office. Um, there was one thing that came up tonight. Uh, you guys were fine, so obviously you didn't jump in or say anything. But the idea of design from the dais. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was really kind of unfortunate because, you know, an applicant came and almost right off the bat were like, well, we're here to just see what you guys think. Right, right. right. So that was that is difficult um, right. in that context in general. But what... The board does, and even when it's a, a concept plan review where it's not an actual vote or motion potentially, we can talk about what things about the proposal do not feel we meet the LDRs, but we really want to avoid saying what we think would work because that may not work depending on what changes they make or other things. So um, you guys did a great job on that, but because it kind of developed a little bit tonight, just wanted to remind everybody that we can talk about all the reasons why we think it fails the LDRs, but want to always try to avoid giving them specific things to do because when they do them and it gets denied, obviously it creates a problem at least from their end. So, but uh, welcome the new members. It was a great night and uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, and I'll add to that. Uh, thank, thanks to all of you. Welcome back to Carol, who was reappointed, and uh, to our new board members. So we're glad to have you here, and some different opinions, and it's always always a good thing. Um, and with that, I make a motion to adjourn. Move. All right. Thank you. I was a little worried by setting the tap over there. The, the lights went out on me four times in that round. I sat there.